We're delighted to have an exhibition today of work by Jacob Sutton. Uh, his lovely fresh paintings of farm animals have just been such a joy to everybody coming to look at these and uh, all the people passing by. So um, Jacob, tell us something about these works. Uh, you, I understand, bribed some sheep to sit for you. Exactly. Um, for three days in Pembrokeshire, uh, three years ago, um, I decided to um, paint sheep. And uh, I jumped over fences and went into fields and they just didn't take to me and ran off to the f furthest part of the field that they could get away from Jake. I understand that you worked on the ground, lying in the field with your raw canvas and uh, four or five tubes of paint. Uh, how, how was that? It's a, a novel way. Yeah. Um, I, frankly, I think it was laziness, but I couldn't be bothered to, um, to take an easel with me. I, and I, I'm not actually sure why I never took an easel. And frankly, I didn't need it. Um, so what happened was that the easels on the ground uh, with, as Anna says, three or four tubes of paint and white. Um, and off, 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 I, off I went. And I was you know, inches away from the bread where they were feeding. So the paintings do have this strong intimacy of like being right next, the sheep feel right, next to you, and that's because they were right next to me. The angle that I was doing was looking up, which explains why most of the paintings in the background is sky and not ground, because I was literally, you know, inches from the ground looking up. You've given these sheep uh, and, and the hens and the other animals such characters, because they are. Yeah, um, I, I, th I think that's very interesting what you've said, and I think that for me, um, the, the way one has tried to capture that is to spend time with them. And tell us about the chickens. Presumably they were very bribable. Uh, yeah. Um, the, 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 the chickens show even more curiosity uh, than the sheep. Um, and it's the canvas that they're interested in. You just, you just put a canvas down on the ground and they think it's food. Um, it's uh, off-white, it's unprimed. Uh, linen canvas and for some reason it just seems to attract them and they think it's food and they peck and peck and peck what I don't understand is you'd think one peck and they'd go off. The other part of uh, Jacob's work which we love is uh, his beautiful canvases with flowers they're very elegant quite spare in some ways in in terms of uh, the way that they're there's no background there's no intrusion. Yeah um, I just thought um, what I wanted just from a selfish point of view, is to do something that would be good therapeutic for me um, and just uh, have a peacefulness of uh, just a, a challenge that was completely different from being outside. Um, part of the problem, obviously, when you work out in the elements in, in, on farms is the, is the weather, the climate. Um, so I wanted to be able to work indoors and um, I just thought, you know, I wanted to, just the sort of peacefulness um, of, of doing flowers um, and just a, a, a different, a, a completely different atmosphere from, from being outside. And this whole cycle of paintings, um, out in the open air for a few years really that you were, you were doing and, and on farms, was very much um, at odds with your experience in Afghanistan where you painted um, for what, three years uh, from October 2001. Can you tell us something about that, that yeah. time? Yeah, um, uh, it was drawings, it was charcoal drawings. Um, I, I went, um, I was painting sailing boats at Paul in 2000, September the 11th, 2001, and um, I got a phone call from a friend de describing what was happening in New York. Um, and one thing led to another, and, and about 12 days later, I was on a plane to Pakistan not knowing what I was doing, where I was going. I had to look in, in a newspaper for a map of where in the world Afghanistan was. And I ended up um, being there for three and a half years. Uh, I was at Tora Bora in the mountains at, on Christmas Day with a satellite phone wishing people Happy Christmas uh, in a tent. Um, and I stayed because of the people. I've never been to a country where um, I've had such generosity friendliness and hospitality uh, from people who 
are generally extremely poor. Another area of Jacob's talents is portraiture, and there are some very beautiful portraits um, here at the gallery. But in addition to this, uh, Jacob is a noted photographer and has spent time, a very long time, I understand, with uh, Tony Blair photographing him around as he travelled around the world. Jake, it's really exciting for me to be here with you tonight because I can remember when I was, well, you and I were both young, and you take coming and taking the first ever sort of proper photographs of, of Tony and me before Tony was even an MP. Exactly. Um, I got a phone call from Derry. Um, and Derry Irving QC. Derry Irving QC um, saying, can uh, he send somebody over who would like to stand for Parliament? And um, I was in East Dulwich at the time and I was a first floor flat. And uh, this gentleman came along to my living room and I took some photographs using the window light um, and I took the pictures and I sent them off to him and three months later a phone call came along and said um, I've got in can you come to Parliament meet my wife and um, take some pictures on the terrace of um, the House of Commons and that's exactly what you did and in fact one of those pictures I think is in my book and uh, and then years later just before Tony left of course you did a whole series of, of photographs of the last eight months in number 10 of the Blair government, which was uh, an extraordinary historical record. Exactly. Um, we, we, we met on a plane to Turkey. Um, I came upstairs on the 747 and I walked towards Tony and I can vi visualise it now, his, his eyes blinking in trying to recognise and as I got closer, I think he did recognise me and we had a good chat after 25 years of um, separation. And then I spent eight months um, going around uh, the world, Middle East and Britain and some places in Europe, um, documenting the last eight months, months and um, many of them with um, Sherry Blair in the, in the photographs as well. But this is great, but none of them, I think, featured sheep or hens or even, even some glorious flowers. So it's really nice to, to see all this because when I first met Derry, when I first met Tony, your father had... Jerry bought pictures by your father, and of course he does the most fantastic pictures of, of this too. And to see you um, making your own style is just fantastic. Well, that's really nice of you to say that. I, I, I try to. I never thought I'd paint or draw. Um, I seem to have taken it up. Um, in your old age. <laughs> in my old age. Oh, that's a. Oh, that, that hurts. That hurts. Oh, I haven't had that one yet. Okay, well, there we go. Um, but um, no, I, I, it, it just gives me a lot of pleasure to do it. And I just try and bring the pleasure to the canvas and then into London from the countryside. Well, absolutely. And um, I mean, that, that hen over there definitely looks about as though she's just about to lay an egg. <laughs>